You are listening to the Julie Parker Practice Success Podcast, where you discover management insights and strategies for your successful dental practice. There are also interviews with key people in the industry who have advice and services to help you and your team achieve great success. Welcome to this episode of the Julie Parker Practice Success Podcast. And we've got a financial discussion on our hands today, which is glorious. I'm not quite sure if we've had a finance discussion before, so this is a first. And we're joined by MediPro Capital Finance member, Olga Yushina. How are you today? Oh, good. Thank you, Julie. Thank you for having me. And hello to everybody who's listening. That's it. It's delight at all watching. We're doing it on YouTube now as well, and you're being kind enough to expose your face to the world, which is wonderful. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about Medico, sorry, MediPro Capital Finance and how your career has developed to the point where you are working with them now. That's right. Okay, so MediPro Capital Finance, we are a group of brokers that focusing purely on medical medical professionals, which is your um, specialists, dentists, vets, allied health. Um, we don't have to be, but we prefer to use our medical channels and work with, with this kind of clients because, well, they, they're good quality clients and banks love them. Uh, however, we can assist anyone who would like a mortgage or any type of funding because we not just focusing on one type of client, but also can do different types of funding. So covering it all, (laughs) specializing in medicos, uh, and it gives us basically uh, good expertise because medicos are, um, it's sort of progressive uh, type of client because they are, because they are, um, you know, their lives and situations are pretty complicated. And if you know complicated stuff, you can, you'll be able to help the, you know, the simple, simple Yeah. Sorry, I was going to say simple situations, <laughs> not people. So it's quite a I, niche. Uh, simple people. <laughs> it, it's good to have to, to, to be simple sometimes. So why not? That's right. I agree. I agree. Um, so with the people who are listening to this podcast, they are going to be dentists or dental team members. So you can help dentists out with any kind of finance, whether it be investment finance, business finance, or personal finance. Yes, dent- we love dentists. We have a fair bit of our database are dentists and we like working with them. We also like working with trusted advisors around advisors around dentistry as well. And we all work towards the, the better outcome for dentists. So um, in, type of, in terms of finance, um, it's yes, it's residential. You own occupied and, and investment properties finance it's commercial finance when people buy um buildings to to start a practice it is business finance when people buying when dentists buying into someone existing practice or starting their their own practice it could be um fit out finance it could be it could be asset finance it could be cash flow finance and we go down to unsecured loans as well. So everything's included and everything's possible. That's tremendous. And we've already had a previous discussion before to get a feel for each other's businesses. And whereas many people may just think of the big banks to be able to go through for finance or if it's more niche down, other there are other companies that are quite common for dentists to go through. But why go through you? I know that I was impressed with your answer with that, that, you know, there are so many products out there. It's kind of beyond the layman to be able to understand which ones are going to be best for them. That's true. Well, that's why you hire somebody like us, or brokers who works for MediPro Capital. And so we, we in, instead of, as I said, the bank, what would, give me a reason why would you go to the bank? The bank would have... <laughs> at least five to 10 products that they offer. And not, not every bank would, for instance, offer asset finance, or they're not too good at construction loans, for instance. Um, and in general, they have five to 10 products and that's it. So you personally, or a dentist would personally have to go to a bank, research it all, and then 
if you want to go to another bank, do the same exercise, but the bank would never send you to have a comparison, to make a comparison to, with, with other banks. What we do, we have, first of all, we have a special software that does it for us, does all the comparison based on needs and objectives all of the of the client. Um, and we have over 50 lenders on our pa uh, panel and there you go. So we have 50 lenders times 10. 500 different options. How many, yeah. right. how, how many options do we have at the same time? Plus the system will narrow down based on, on the needs, as I said, and also our expertise, we will help to structure the, the loan um, for better outcome for our clients. Yeah, that is fantastic because once I would imagine putting myself in the position, I mean, I had my own practice a while ago, and once you step into the world with one particular organisation, one particular institution, you tend to just stick with them. And my consideration, and I, you know, I'm not a, a finance guru at all, so maybe that's why it never occurred to me, that there would be better products that were in my benefit, more so through other institutions. But I just never had the awareness to do it and then research into it. Yeah, that's true, because this is not your mm. job. You know, you, you, you're busy with your things, and obviously you hire somebody who, we, we don't charge a fee, so the bank pays us the fee for, for, for bringing clients as a part of the, you know how, how it normally goes, it's a part of their, mar instead of sp spending on marketing, they will give us a fee. So it's the same thing. It's either they will market to the market, like open market, or they pay to us, it doesn't matter. Because some people think that the prices will be, will be high because they go through the broker, but this is not true. So, so we're using part of their, you know, marketing budget. Um, in terms of what you've said, yes, you, you start your new business, you don't know much about cash flow. You don't know much about um, write-offs uh, on your equipment and apparently they can be different and we can suggest what kind of write-offs you can use for your equipment. Therefore, we, because we work with, with account specialist accountants as well, the accountants that work with dentists and other medical professionals that, that they that have expertise in this field. Um, so yeah, we, our group our group formed and we will help each other basically working working with one type of client. Uh, also, what I was going to say that staying with one bank, it sometimes it doesn't benefit you because banks do things to attract new clients more. They they inject more funds into this you know they have cash outs they have better rates discounts on rates to track new clients what comes with uh, what comes to all clients they're sitting there on their back books they don't have to worry about them they're not going to run anywhere and that's why no one ever worried about the rates so the rates stay that as they are unless somebody like us for instance come and ask for repricing of this particular loan for this particular client, we can do That's it. That's a really, on their two very, very good points. One, that people can come to you for your assistance and guidance with this. You can create all of these arrangements with the different financial institutions and you guys don't charge the client themselves. You get your compensation from these financial institutions. So that's wonderful. So why on earth wouldn't you use someone like yourself? <laughs> There's no cost yes. to that. There's yes. only only benefit. But the other element, and so many businesses fall into this trap, dental practices included, where you provide enticements and incentives and benefits to get new clients on board and you kind of ignore the ones that are already there that are re-spending with you over and again. And so this is a really important aspect as well because, as you say, get repricing on it where we've established these financial institution agreements and we're five years down the track and you could actually get a better deal five years down the track. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And we actually call it a loyalty tax. So you have to pay tax <laughs> because you're loyal to one institution. That's true. Well, they have retention teams. If you start poking the bear and you call, hey, we're going to refinance, then they will start offering you discounts, of course. But then you think, where have you been all these years, you know, and why wouldn't you look after me? I'm your client for so many years. Yeah, why did so. I have to force your hand into it? Why wasn't it voluntary from your end? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that's how they work. And we, we actually use it to our advantage because 
as I said, we can go and reprice people's loans without them even knowing. And we do this audit, so-called, every now and then, once a I think some some banks can change rates like once a three months, some like in a longer period. Um, and I'm, t- I'm talking about base rates. I'm not talking this, um, you know, how RBA lifts up the cash rate and all the rates are changing. I'm talking about the base rate. And that's what they normally give um, the discount of. The rate itself will grow, but the base rate, it whatever it was, whatever it was, whatever was given to a client at some stage, it stays there. So all these increases from RBA will be just on top of it. What we're doing, we're asking to reduce the base rate. Yeah. yeah. That's how that's how it works. And yeah, we do it regularly and yeah, we just like doing it. We like delivering good news to It is clients. good news. <laughs> that's right. Because the potential for savings is so many tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, etc. When we're considering the over the kind of the lifetime of a dentist's investing opportunities you know they're buying their own home they're buying their own business as you said they might be doing a new fit out of a business they might be buying into another one and then ongoing you know cash flow uh, finance as well there are so and when you talk about investment uh, banking and loans you that you know the sky is the limit to what people can achieve and so being very smart about how much they're going to actually end up being out of pocket for all of this it makes perfect sense to get assistance with it yeah that, that's right julie and we work with them we work with our clients um holistically so we're not just looking at one particular case we, what we try doing is we, we ask about the plans future plans at least 10 years ahead what do you what what, what what are you planning to do okay you're starting your clinic now you want to buy this um building commercial building and starting your practice doing all this equipment set up and things like that what do you want to do in in 10 years when when you're more stable and you paid your loan down um so you will have equity in this property why wouldn't you use it in you know buy some investment for your for your personal use that's one thing uh, also People don't realize that if they borrow money to a business and they are directors and owners of this business, they are personal, they personally guarantee this debt and it affects their credit record. And then when they go to buy their own house, not, not the business one, not, not the, you know, apart from the business, when they buy their own occupied or investment, this record will have, can affect or can impact, let's say can impact their credit history and and serviceability in the end. So we would suggest, because we work in this area, we would suggest how to properly structure it so it impacts your personal purchases less in the end. I love it. Because that's a trap to fall into, isn't it? At the start, you just want the funds to buy the business and you're thinking very short term in a sense because you just want to get over that hurdle and just start making money and building that business up to be viable but not recognising some of the pitfalls that you could be falling into because you just don't have the knowledge to be able to understand all the areas to make sure you're being properly looked after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... So we try to practice it, or actually do practice it. And um, we, as I said, we track other advisors and we work with them in the group. Um, And our main goal is to set our client for a better future financially. I love it. I love it. And with the way the world has turned over the past three years, all sorts of things can happen. And to try to make as many of these kind of things stable in your world is a very good thing. So when people start to work with you, what's the process? First of all, we work, anything can be done online now with all this technology and um, people being busy. And sometimes it's easier to just pop on Zoom instead of, you know, driving half an hour there, half an hour back. Um, what we do, I prefer to meet face to face if the client is in my state, in, in my city. We, we chat, have a little chat about situation and their plans and portal. We use this nice, beautiful, smart program called Sales Tracker. It 
it integrates so many bits in one. It helps us, and so it's interactive with the client as well. I what I do, I put the in, put all the information in the sales sales tracker, and the client has access from the other end, and they can upload their documents. They can um, update their information the way they, the way they like if it comes, and then this sales tracker program lets me select the right product and it, it does all the compliance stuff all the signatures so it's it's really really good after so after all the information all information is in that portal i do my research i do my calculations and then i keep communicating with the client saying offering the options what, what what's best for you that's what i think is good yes agreed and then we proceed to the apl actual application to the bank and then the the bank journey starts sometimes it's good depends on the bank sometimes it's good sometimes it's like so easy and goes through no problem sometimes it's back and forth something they don't understand they need additional stuff and things like that and i always try to make it as less intrusive for my client as possible because i know they're busy people and some 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 people call me at ten o'clock at night. Some people send emails at one o'clock in the morning. So they are busy people, and you can't just keep going back to them asking, "Oh, what what what, what does this mean? What do you do here? Give me this paper." So I'm I'm trying to compile it all. And if all in one thing, if I don't, if I can get it myself through, I don't know, his accountants, for instance, well, I'll do that. That's nice because I agree with you as a consultant. You do get uh, emails at all hours and you do picture these poor people, you know, they've just spent a whole day doing their work, clinical work in the surgery. They get home, have dinner, maybe watch a couple of hours of television and get straight back to work again. <laughs> That's true. And, um, yeah, application to the bank, to a bank, is not an easy thing. It's, it's big. It's involved so many supporting documents you have to supply. You have to put it all in right order and put the right story to the bank so the bank knows what, you know, so asks less questions, let's say. And, yeah, so that's what we're here for. We'll help people to, to, to package up this part of um, application to the bank and put the communication, make the, their communication with the bank as less as possible, as easy as possible. Mm, that sounds very good. And I think a lot of people would be very happy with that approach as well. And what kind of time span do you need to get your work done? I know it depends on the complexity of the project in front of you, but what kind of timing are we talking about? It could be different. It varies. But if it was, a, let's say, everything is ready and the clients give me all, all the information straight away, they're ready to go, it can be done. It could turn around, it could be up to 10 days, even less, one week, we can we can fit in one week. So if someone has an, an urgent, you know, they're right on the cusp of signing on the dotted line, they can actually come to you and still get pretty quick assistance. Every bank has got their own time of picking up the application from, from the um, retail channel. We work with medical channels and we have dedicated people, not always, but most of the time, we have dedicated people that work for... Uh, medical professionals, dentist inclusive, um, included. Uh, so that means I, I can talk to them straight away. So I don't have to wait for for the retail channel to get the application, and then three days later call me back. Oh, we we're missing this and that. I can call to my banker, the, my contact, private banker, and say what are we up to, and he will explain it to me. Because sometimes between the messages coming from the back end of the bank to me and the actual, the actual let's say, approval or pre-approval or letter being issued, sometimes it's like a couple of, like a day. And I don't know what's going on. I, I've got, I, I have this, I have this message. I just received it from the, um, from the back channel from the bank saying, oh, I've got a conditional approval. What does it mean? What, where are the conditions? So there is no actual official letter. I called my BDM, I called my um, private banker, and he said, oh, no, it's on the way. I've just submitted to the credit. You'll see it soon. 
yeah, so it, it, it's really good when you have these close relationships with uh, people who helps you from the bank side. Yeah, that's right. That can only facilitate the process. And, you know, it sounds like that a lot of the work that you do, a layman just simply can't. They don't have those relationships to start off with. They don't know where to search for this sort of work and it would take them a long, long time to be able to find out how to research in these areas. That's true. Um, well... I, if you're asking about the difference between general mortgage broker and specialist mortgage broker, yeah, it's just some knowledge, expertise, some, something that they don't know because simply they haven't been involved mm -hmm. in it. It's, it's different things. Um, for instance, the, their unique income is, is different to read. They simply, your general broker simply maybe never seen the, the um, pay slip with all the loading and... Um, other like types of pay that um, a medico gets, or just just the just the other day actually yesterday there was an example that um, I have I have a client who came to a broker who who told him that he has to wait for twelve months to accumulate his ABM income. He's um he's a, actually he's a dentist by the way, and so they. This broker told him to wait to accumulate 12 months of income, then they can apply for a loan. And I know for sure that it doesn't have to be that long. And I know at least four, four channels that can take four months of income with different types of verification. They still will have to verify that income, but it, for, for, for this type of client, because they have, they low, low risk for the bank. Yeah, it's a different kettle of fish, isn't it? Don't, don't, don't have to, yeah, they don't have to wait that long and therefore, well, this guy didn't know about it. And eight months is a long time when you're trying to kickstart your business ownership journey. Yeah, that's true. It is a long time and you, you, you could be missing out. We don't know what's going to happen in eight months. That's right, <laughs> that's right. And you can be missing out as well. If you know what to do and you've bought, for example, an ongoing concern or even if you bought buying a startup in eight months' time, you could have your books filled in eight months' time, but then you've got to start the journey, you know, eight months later. That's yeah. true. Yeah. That, that's, that's what they're hoping on. They, they're working in, on projections and cash flows. And you lose opportunities. If there's a practice that you want to buy right now and then you get told you have to wait for a whole year, you know, you're going to miss out on yes. that opportunity. Well, yeah, that's the thing. And this is also a difference between your general borrower and, and, and medical yes. borrower. So... Um, dentists and, and, and other medical professionals are so lucky um, to be regarded as low risk for the banks. But you know why? Because their profession is um, stable and the income is, you know, in high bracket. That's why banks love yeah. them. Yeah, and it's a huge benefit. <laughs> so there are even more products are open and available to them. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. And so if there are dentists out there that are, looking at or they've already financed a whole bunch of stuff one or many things or they're looking at financing one or many things then they would just need to contact you and that would get the ball rolling they don't have to pay you anything but they still get access to the best deals that they can possibly get right now and moving forward you continue looking after them in this space you summarize it very <laughs> well julie that's exactly what happens <laughs> We would like, we like, why are we asking our clients to, about all these plans for the future? Because we want to work there with them long term. We, we want to finance every deal they might come up with or their accountant suggests or their financial planner suggests. So, because we, we already know what they own. We, we're already looking after the, um, their interest rates making sure they are comfortable and on a, on a, on a good level. So we, we would love to help all the way along to, to we would love to help. And what, what state are you based in? I'm in Adelaide, our South Australia and our head office and most of the brokers are in Brisbane, uh, but we go back and forth. Our aggregator is in Perth. And so we, we went to Perth as well. So we, got, we fly everywhere. <laughs> we fly everywhere. Plus there's all the virtual work that you can do as well. So if we've got any dentists out there that are thinking, yes, I think this is a very good option for me to move forward with, what's the best next step? 
Well, the, the first step is to contact me, for, of course. Um, I've got a mobile phone number and my email address. So, if you, Julie, you can share it with, with, with these nice people. That'd be good. I certainly will. They'll all be in the show notes so they can jump onto that straight away and reach out. Yeah. After that, I'll just give you a call, guys, and then we have a quick chat about your situation, what your plans are, what your goals are, and then we go from there. And you're happy to be in communication with their financial advisors and their accountants, all the things. It, it, it helps. It ha Or, by the way, we can actually um, connect them to the portal as well. And, but they don't see every everything, all the information about the client. They only see what they have to see, but they can upload this document straight to the portal. That's great. There's not emails bouncing back and forth everywhere. That's it. So, yeah, exactly. So it doesn't sit in my inbox. Instead, it just goes straight in the portal where That's all, all the information, information is centrally kept. That's fantastic. Well, this is such a tremendously powerful service and it's th this kind of assistance to make sure that people aren't wasting the opportunities that are out there and help them be more successful and does, and be able to develop themselves to a point where they are financially secure, they can have faith in that and that they know they're always getting the best deal. That's it, Julie. That's right. That's correct. We would, would love to help our clients the best possible way, suggesting the best possible structure and making sure that their future is looked after as well in terms of um, loans, funding and interest rates as well. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Olga. It's been very interesting and I do hope and I do encourage people to be jumping on and contacting you straight away and seeing how they can benefit from incorporating you into their financial world. Thank you, Julie. Thanks for having me and have a good day, everybody. Talk to you soon. If you enjoyed today's podcast, then you should come along and join the club. The club is a whole library of lunch and learns with new lunch and learns being produced all the time that help your dental team gain greater success in your systems, in your team behaviors, in your patient management, in your patient engagement, in their treatment plans. They are usually around half an hour in length. And so team members can sit down, be paid for their lunch break, eat lunch while they're being inspired and delivered all of these insights and strategies that can be implemented so you all achieve greater levels of success. Also, Amina and I, my buddy from Dental Management Expertise, have a company, Dental Business Mastery, together. And our flagship online one-year course for dental practice managers and dental practice owners to learn how to very successfully manage your dental practice is available. Head over to dentalbusinessmastery.com.au to find out more information and has information about any other courses that we've got available. Also, make sure you do jump onto my website, julieparkerpracticesuccess.com.au and you will see a whole load of free information. There are articles, the blog, downloads, templates, a whole load of things that are designed to help you overcome any specific challenge that you've got going on in your practice at the moment. If you have any suggestions of topics or guests that I can have on the podcast, please let me know. Thanks for listening.